Good evening, everyone. This is your host, Jeremy Michael, with another episode of Make That Bloody Movie with Coffee. And tonight's episode, we'll be talking about six ways to make money through short films. And also, stay tuned till the end. Stay around till the end of the show, because I'll tell you the coffee of the night, which Jr. Michael likes to drink every now and then. Which I know you guys out there are coffee lovers, so you get to figure out what kind of coffee I'm drinking tonight. So you got to stay around till the end of the show. But um, back to what we were talking about:、uh, six ways to make money through short films.、Um, like I said, there's many ways to skin a cat, and as an independent filmmaker, you know, a lot of people say don't do a short film. You know, some people say do, and then you got others that'll say, ah,、oh, it's a waste of time. You're better off doing a feature. I think is is not one size fit all. I think it depends on you as a person who's writing the story and. The creative team that you're working with, you know, I think、um, there's no right or wrong answer. I think it's whatever works for you works for you, and whatever works for Bob or Bill or John or Jenny works for them. I mean, you know, everybody tries to tell everybody what to do, but I think at the end of the day, what are we talking about here? Are we talking about getting the job done, or are we talking about telling and trying to crush other people's dreams? You know, and、um, I think it's very funny in this industry. Everybody tries to tell everybody what to do, but I, nobody's telling it. People, you know what? Just get the job done. Just do it. Write your story. Get it, you know, corrected, drafted. If first draft, second draft, whatever the case may be, get it done. Get the written word done. And as you're doing your script and writing your story, then at the end, when it's done and you like how the story goes and it flows, you decide: Are you going to make it 30 pages? Are you going to make it ninety pages? I mean, to be honest with you, I mean a lot of short films have turned out into feature films, and has been the calling card for a lot of independent directors, producers, and filmmakers to break in into the industry. So, am I going to sit here and tell somebody not to do a short film? No, I want to tell somebody: keep being creative, keep doing your work, and enjoy it, and just have fun. Just get it out there. I know this business. At the end of the day, it is a business, and we all need to know how to get our product from paper to actual production, and to getting it out there for the world to see. You know, I know、um, a lot of times us creative people we're not business minded, and we fall short. Some of us, when it comes to understanding the mechanics of this, is still a business. Besides, you know, being creative, and I think if all of us was either trained or understood that, because some of us were just stuck, we don't want to, we don't want to do the business side. It's, it's boring. It's not fun. But for some people, we have to. Others, we could delegate it to somebody else to do it. But for some people who don't have that opportunity, they need to, you know, go out there and do it for themselves. You know, know the business and know the um. The creative side. Well, the creative side is usually、um, already there and taken care of, but、um, the business side is what gets you. So, for all you independent filmmakers out there, you need to understand that、um, definitely, definitely, definitely learn the business side of this of this movie making business because it will help you in the long run. You won't get cheated. So, again, this is six ways to make money through your short films. Creating a short film is one of the easiest way to start out in your film career.、Um, it's a proof of concept for a feature concept or feature film, I should say,、um, for it to get commercial work. In in almost all cases, when you have you do a short film, it's a good way to test your writing skills, your directing skills, and your、um, creativity to the world.、Um, But it it would be amazing if you could get paid well for making short films. So here are we, here we are, with the six ways you can actually earn your living through short films. And、I、apologize for the background noises; it's a little crazy tonight.、Um, I will share this with you. Okay, the six ways. The first way is. Uploading on YouTube. One of the easiest and most common method to earn is to upload it on YouTube. 
where you get paid as per number of views and subscription once your channel is monetized, quote unquote, of course. This also depends on the type of video you have and the ad that bought the space on that video. Advertisers pay whenever people click on the ad and associated with the video. If the short movie goes viral, YouTube plays it heavily. So, you know, that's one way to do it. Another way to get exposure for your short film um, is to go into film festivals, film freeway, without a box. Uh, these are the platforms you can put your, sh your short film, submit it to festivals, so you can maximize the exposure, you know. Um, and another thing about film festivals, I'll tell you this, um, there's three tiers to a film festival. So you got your top tiers, which is your South by Southwest, Can, Cons, maybe I'm saying it wrong. Um, you know, these, those are your top tiers films, film festivals, and then you got your second tiers, all the other ones that are not so heavily talked about. And then you got your bottom ones, the third tier, which are those random film festivals you look through and you, you see them in different states. Now, keep in mind, you know, a lot of people say, well, go for the top dog, go for the top dog. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's so funny. When you go for the second tier film festivals and the third tier, you may think that there aren't important people at these events. Well, I'm sadly to tell you people, you are dead wrong. You don't know where these people are going to be, or you don't know what company or representation that is there to see your film. I know everybody says, yeah, go to the top tier film festival. That's where it's at. That's where it's at. No, it's not. No, it's not. You got to go with your gut instincts. You got to test the waters. And I'll tell you, I'm the type of person that I don't go where everybody eats. I like to go where everybody doesn't eat. I'm a wild card. So, you know, I like to test the waters. You know, some people say, well, that's crazy, JR. Well, hey, crazy is my middle name. Why not? I'll do what other people won't do. So for all you independent filmmakers out there, definitely, definitely go for the second tier and go for the third tier. Why not? Create the buzz. That's what film festival is all about, is creating the buzz and creating a name for yourself. Giving your project the maximum exposure for what it needs and getting it out there. Okay. So, like I said, I apologize for the background noises. Um, the second way to get your short film out there is organizing workshops in schools and colleges. And pretty much, you know, you can do a screening there. And you could charge students $2 to see your film and critique it and see how they receive it. If they like it, no. If they do, great, you know. But it's all another way to get perspective on your short film and see how it relates to, to the public, you know. Um, workshops also is good for students who don't who want to get into the film business. You can create workshops for them or you can do a free workshop. You know, some colleges and high schools, they'll offer that and you can teach a small, amount, small group of kids uh, what it took for you to make this short film and where do you got the idea and what was inspirational about it. What inspired you to do it, I should say. So, you know, workshops is a good way to do schools and colleges to promote your short film. Another way is promoting a social networks like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, you know, Tumblr. Believe it or not, when you post and you talk about your film, people get curious. And don't sit there and think that um, people are not going to look at independent films. That is a total lie. You know, it doesn't always mean you have to have an A-list actor in your film to be looked at. People are curious. People are going to watch what they want to watch. Point blank. I know the studios don't want to hear that and nobody else cares to, to, to admit that, but hey, if I like Coke and Johnny down the block like Pepsi and Coke is advertised and say, oh no, you got to come to us, come to us. Johnny likes Pepsi. Oh well, you're not going to get his business. Keep it pushing. Same thing like the studios. You don't like Bob's production doing nice independent films here that cater to certain uh, audience. Oh, well, you could join him. You could work with him. Or you could be stuck up and stay in your corner. But the point is I'm trying to make is 
that I don't think that your short film won't get looked at. It will. It will. In today's day and age, definitely it'll get looked at. So that's another way to do it is promote it on social media. Get the word out. Uh, participating in uh, short film contests is also a good way to uh, promote your film, your short film. And um, some of these contests, they got money prizes. You can get money to produce your next short film. Um, but it's a good way to network and to um, really uh, get the word out when you participate in short film contests. Um, the sixth way is selling the legal rights for making it as a feature film. So what you can do sometimes is selling the legal rights for your short film for making it as a feature. This tends to be, um, you got to have a little luck with this, but it can happen. Uh, the financier, the film producer allows you to direct the, that film or else you'll get a patent rights for using the theme of the short film subject to a feature. So what tends to happen is, is that um, you, everybody likes the short film, whoever you're dealing with, you know, they say they want to do it, but they don't want you, but they can work out some deal with you. Make sure you have an entertainment lawyer or a lawyer on board when you do this. Don't try to do fly by night stuff and sign a, a contract and not knowing what you're doing just because you want to get it out there. No, make sure you get some type of percentage or some type of deal with before you, you sign over the rights. Um, are there times where, you know, um, you got to sacrifice a film? Yeah, it does happen to everybody. I, I can't say for everybody, but through my experience, it happened to some and others it doesn't. So um, definitely get an entertainment lawyer when you try to sell the legal rights for making it as a feature, your short film. Um, so those are the six ways you can actually uh, promote your short film and to get the word out and turn it into money. Um, I know those six ways are very vague, but they do work with a strategy and a, and a plan. And again, everyone, listen, there's no right or wrong. I mean, you guys out there might find a different way to, or a different approach to the six ways of how to get your short film out there. You might find other avenues to help you. Please do it. You know, um, these are just guidelines that you can follow and you can use if it's necessary, you know, or if it applies to you. You know, I'm just giving free information out there because I think we as independent filmmakers, we, you know, they don't like to tell us nothing. You know, we always have to figure it out. And I think that if we were given certain tools, we would know how to approach this a little bit better. But, you know, certain people, I won't say, like to keep it to themselves and that's fine. But, you know, <laughs> knowledge is power and eventually the knowledge comes out. So, um... All right, everyone. Well, what I want to say again is do not give up on your dreams. Do not uh, allow anyone to tell you it cannot be done because it can. Consistency is what takes you to success. It's not how fast you can get there. It's not let me land this big, big uh, contract. You know, if you're, if you're doing this for money, I get it. It's a business. Yes, we need to live and eat and survive. But if you're, what I'm saying is, if your initial um, motivation is just the money, I'm going to tell you now. You could disagree with me, but I've seen this in my own life. You do that. It's it's not going to be fulfilling for you. You know, when people say, "Oh, do your passion, do your passion, fuck your passion." You, you hear people say that. F your passion. That's not true. That's not true. I know people personally. Quite a few. That have followed their passion. And became multimillionaires. I've seen it. I've seen it. Millionaires and billionaires. I've seen it. And for them to. Other people out there. Who tells other people. Don't follow your passion. That is That is a total lie it's a total lie because check this out ladies and gentlemen when you follow your passion and you're true to yourself guess what 
there is a energy and a frequency that flow that flows with that because you're asking that you're telling the universe that you really want to do this and you feel so good about it in every bone in your body you just vibrate in such a way that it's like you light up that's a frequency and let me tell you when you direct that frequency and you push it and push it and push it and push it cultivate it it will spark and light a fire and literally you will start to see things manifest and open up for you guarantee guarantee so don't ever let somebody tell you you don't do anything for passion that's not true that's not true there's a lot of people i know who are rich who are billionaires who are multi-millionaires and even though they'll tell you oh yeah i'm happy i'm this i'm that 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 yeah there's 365 days out of the year what are they doing behind closed doors are they really happy or they're putting on a mask when they get outside and say they are i bet you i bet you a lot of them are not a lot of them are do, probably did it for the wrong reason and thought that the money was going to make them happy and it really wasn't but we have to stop telling everybody out there that the money's going to make you happy no it's not it, money's like a hammer it's like a screwdriver it's a tool you use it to fix a problem you use it to okay we could say it this way money is great money is wonderful because money will buy me freedom think about that money would would buy you the time for you to do what you want the way you want and how you want now if you're saying you're doing money because you want freedom you want more time for yourself so you can have your bills paid and go on this vacation chill with your wife your kids your girlfriend your 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 whoever your friends so if money will give you that time because you're trading that time to make the money but you reach a certain point where you have enough where you don't have to trade the time and that's what we're really focusing on is our time and our freedom that's what we're really saying but everybody say oh, i would like to have a nice car and this and that of course of course obviously you 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 want to have a nice car but you also want to have the time to enjoy it you see a lot of people make a lot of money but they don't get the time to enjoy their beautiful cars why are you thinking you see some of these guys when they die they got fancy cars in the garage mint condition some of them hardly drive it some of the, some of those cars don't even have miles on it because they didn't have the time they'll tell you oh no i collected it i didn't want to you know beat up on the car and this and that yeah some of them do some of them do but others they just didn't have the time because they were working so much they didn't get to enjoy the stuff that they bought so again let's not fool ourselves we know why we want to make money it's because we want the freedom and it's time that's the bottom line all right ladies and gentlemen but those are the six ways to make money through short films um there's other ways you know but these are the six ways i came across and uh it was by i will give credit to by shortly fundly it's a website that i found online and they talked about the six ways to make money through short films through my research i thought that was pretty cool and i wanted to share it with you guys So shout out to Short Fundly um for giving us those great pointers but um again ladies and gentlemen stay grounded stay positive and if you have negative people around you get away from them I don't care who they are get away from them cut them out of your life trust me you let go of one you make five more friends and always remember you want people around you that's going to bring you value Whatever that value is to you, that's yours. Nobody else's. But these people that come around you has to bring value. If they're bringing you down, t- saying negative things, telling you this and telling you that, those are not your friends. I don't care if it's your mom either. You say, "Mom, I love you, but I got to keep my distance." You don't want anybody to ruin your energy. Because our world is already negative. So why pour more negative into our environment if we don't have to? All right everyone, enjoy your night and it's been a while since I've been on the mic. <laughs> it's good to be back. Um 
again, this episode was six ways to make money through short films. Um, and it was written by Short Funly. You can check them out online. Um, oh, yeah. And by the way, the coffee of the night is I'm drinking Americano. Just a little bit of milk and sugar. So the next time you want a cup of coffee, try a little bit of Americano. <laughs> All right, everyone. This is your host, Jaron Michael, with another episode of Make That Bloody Movie With Coffee. Till next time. We'll stay in touch.